If you ride in low light conditions or during winter, you're gonna need some lights. Unless you just ride on the turbo during winter, in that case, you'll probably be all right. Either way, you might be happy with the set of lights that you've got. You might be looking to buy your first set of lights or you might be looking to upgrade them. And the chances are you've looked at all the different lumen ratings, which is a measurement of how bright a bike light is. And then you've probably Googled or asked a friend what sort of lumen rating I need for my style of riding and then just gone with that. Now this is where this test should come in really handy because it's really hard to visualize what a lumen rated number is actually gonna look like when you're out riding on the road. And that's exactly what we're gonna be testing today. So we're gonna be testing everything all the way down from 15 lumens, which is unbelievably dull. You're gonna see what that looks like in a second, all the way up to a whopping 1600 lumens, which is really bright. You wouldn't really wanna go any brighter than that on the road because it's gonna start really dazzling other road users out there. To keep the test as accurate as possible, we're gonna be using a range from Lizign. They're all gonna be from Lizign because they have a very accurate lumen output. So you're gonna get a very accurate representation of what that lumen looks like. And we're gonna be using a range of six different lights from them, which is gonna give you a really good spread from 1600 lumens all the way down to 15. So you're gonna get a nice incremental breakdown of what they all look like nice and accurately. This is gonna cover a big range of budgets types of riding that you'll need them for, obviously light outputs and battery lengths, and we'll talk about that as we go along too. As you can see here, we're gonna be doing this test on a 50 meter piece of road. I'm gonna show this from two angles, one from the rider perspective from behind the bars to give you an idea of what it looks like when you're using it, and one from a sort of side perspective to show the distance on how far it's going, as well as visibility that other road users are gonna see you as when you're using that sort of brightness out on the road. So we're gonna start with the brightest lights and work our way down to the dullest. So the brightest light we've got with a max output of 1600 is the Design Superdrive 1600 XXL. So it even sounds like a bit of a whopper. So instantly you can see this thing is massively bright. It's giving you a huge field of view. It's illuminating all the way past that 50 meter point with clear visibility on the road in front. It's not only a wide big field of view, but it's a very high field of view. So it feels like the whole vision that you can see in front when you're riding is illuminated. It makes you feel really safe. You can see things in the hedges on the other side of the road or you know pavements. You, you get a huge field of view is basically what I'm saying. And stupid to say, but this is obviously great for seeing things further away. So you can see potholes, you can see gravel on the road if it's coming at you. You're just gonna get every obstacle, you're gonna know it's coming at you as soon as possible when you're using this light. Now, a few things to watch out for when you're using big powerful lights is the fact that some of them can give you a big lumen output, but they won't last for very long when in that mode. So when running this at 1,600 max lumens, you're still gonna get an hour and 45 minutes, which is pretty good. And the other is the fact that a car headlight on full beam is roughly about 1,200 lumens. So this is considerably more powerful than a car headlight on full beam. So it's bright. So if you're gonna be shining this up on the handlebars more than you could do, because you've got the flexibility to point this up if you want, it could really dazzle road users coming towards you. So just be careful to keep this nice and horizontal. Don't point it up too much or else it could be a bit dangerous for you. Either way, when you've got this thing powered up to full whack, it honestly feels like basically daylight out there. You've got full vision all the way around you for basically as long as, as far away as you'd wanna see. You're gonna feel like you can ride very, very safely and comfortably with this on full whack. Now moving down to the Lizine Macro Drive 1300 XXL, that's gonna give you a maximum lumen output of 1300 lumens. As you can see, it's still really powerful. It's still giving you that nice wide range of view. It's giving you a slightly less bright light as you'd obviously expect, but you can still see plenty far enough into the distance. And it's still gonna make for a super comfortable ride. Even if you're traveling at high speed, you're gonna have plenty of time to see anything coming up to you. The other bonus to this is the fact that even running this light at 300 lumens less than the other one, you're gonna get two and a half hours use. So that is considerably more than what we had running at 1600 with the bigger light. So this is why it's worth checking to see what lumen output and runtime you need before going ahead and buying the most powerful light out there. Slightly feeling like I'm more in the dark as opposed to having this huge beam in front of me, but either way, very, very usable at any speed in any condition, even in the pitch black. So really like the 1300 still there. Now moving down to 1000 lumens, we've got the Lizine Light Drive 1000 XL. This is gonna give you a maximum output of, you guessed it, 1000 lumens. Now when you move down the range to this light, you're actually losing one of the LED lights at the front there and you've only got the two, and this does give you a noticeably different 
beam pattern on the floor as you can see here and it still gives you that nice wide field of view but it does feel noticeably like you can't see quite as far away as you can with the other two. I definitely still feel comfortable riding with this at its max output at a high speed out on the road at night. It's definitely still very visible to other road users out there but again being a smaller lighter light having a smaller battery it's got a maximum runtime of an hour and a half at that maximum thousand lumen output so again consider that before jumping in and buying a light then we're going to test an 800 lumen output on a different mode on the Lizine 1300 xxl so this is the same light that we used before just in a different setting a different mode dim down a few to give an 800 lumen up as opposed to the 1300 maximum. You can definitely see it's dimmer, but you can see it goes back to that, what I think is definitely a better field of view. And that's gotta be down to the fact that it's got that three LED output as opposed to the two that we had on the 1000. And when you get down to 800 lumens, it does start feeling like you're riding in the dark. You can't quite see that bit of road just out of sight there. It's just a little bit too dark. And even the road in front of you is well lit but it, it's not as obviously brightly lit as with the other settings. So this is just when it starts to feel like you might hone off the speed a little bit because you can't see things coming at you too quickly. You can't see the road condition quite so well. And fundamentally, if you're gonna be riding at speed at night, I would just feel safer and much happier just riding with a thousand lumens and above. But the advantage is that this setting on this 1300 light is gonna last four hours. So it's gonna give you quite a long run time with an output that you can still ride in. Now moving down to 600 lumens, we're gonna move down to the Design Micro Drive 600XL. This is where the lights really sort of change in the lineup, and you can see here, these lights are getting a lot smaller than we, what we saw with the big lights at the start, and that obviously means that they've got a smaller battery in them, a smaller light output, but they are really designed for a different purpose. So these lights from now are more designed to be seen on your bike as opposed to primarily seeing the road in front of you. Even though surprisingly, as you can see here, you can see the road in front of you relatively well. You definitely wouldn't want to cycle at any speed like this because you're not going to see anything coming up quickly enough. This could be a good get out of jail card if you want to take a spare light on a longer ride. Or if you're worried about a ride running a little bit into the evening and you need a little bit of extra light to be seen, then this could be a good one to stick in the back of your jersey pocket. As you can see, this feels more like a spotlight in front of you. It doesn't feel like you get that nice wide field of view with the brighter lights. That is just generally the case when you go down the lumen range. It's definitely worth noting that this is a smaller light with a smaller battery in it. So it's only gonna last for an hour of that maximum output of 600 lumens. So think about that before going away on your ride. Moving down to 500 lumens on the Hecto Drive 500XL. You can basically see this just looks very similar to what we saw with the 600, just no surprise, ever so slightly darker again. So very similar, just 100 lumens less. That's about all I can say on that one, really. Very similar. Then to get to 400 lumens, we're going to be looking at that on the 600XL again in a different setting. This is really starting to get dark. You really could scrape getting away, cycling very slowly with seeing the road in front of you. But as you can see, really small field of view. Can't really see very far in front of you. Wouldn't recommend cycling with this lumen output. Then moving down to 200 lumens, it's really starting to feel very dark. Can't see anything around you. Can't see much in front of you at all. You wouldn't want to ride with this output at all. This sort of lumen setting would definitely just be used for a to be seen light, not to see yourself. Then 100 lumen output, useless for riding. Still useful to be seen with, but that's all that it can be used for now. You can see it's getting very, very dark on the road in front of you. Then moving down to the Lizine KTV drive. Now this is where these sort of lights you've really got to be careful with and check what you need them for because this does have a maximum output of 200 lumens but the maximum constant output that it has is only 70. So it's able to flash 200 lumens which is really useful to be seen with but in a constant that 70 lumen light as you can see here is next to useless for seeing anything in front of you. And then just for good measure this has got a mode that goes down to a 15 lumen output. Here it is, well I don't really have much to say here, the camera had nothing to focus on the ground in front. So, probably wouldn't recommend using that in many situations. So here's the range going up and down in the rider perspective. And here's the range from the other perspective to give you another look. Overall and unsurprisingly, I really like the feel of everything with an output more than 1300 lumens. 
I think that's half due to this light in particular and the light above as it's got that three LED system that just gives you that really nice wide field of view and you can see the road as far ahead as you want to. So you just feel really comfortable riding with these lights. So I really hope that test has been useful and given you an idea of what these sort of light outputs actually mean in reality. I'd actually be really interested to know what lights you guys are using and what outputs you're using for them. And if you've got any tips and tricks, be sure to dump them in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.